Hey guys, it's May May. Thursday, we did a live show where we made these two cards. I say we, my husband and I, my trusty sidekick, Vinny. We, um, I made these cards in the live show, but we were having internet issues that we didn't even know we were having, and it was causing my videos to be blurry, and that has been corrected now. However, I felt like I needed to refilm this for you guys because I think this is a fun card you're probably going to want to make, and the blurry monster was just too much. So here's what we're going to do. Today, I'm going to remake this one for you, but as a bonus, I'm going to make you one that'll fit in an A2 envelope as well. So this is sometimes called a U-fold card. Some folks call it the vanity card because you can make it look like a little vanity. You can also make it look like a, gar um, a garage. You can make it look like a uh, grill. You can make it look like a kitchen countertop. If you go to Pinterest and look up U-fold cards, there are so many ideas. And I wanted to show you what I did to make mine a little bit different, you guys always ask me, I love the card, but does it fit in an envelope? This first one I'm going to show you how to do will fit in a 5x7 envelope. So this is the 5x7, and these are standard size, so that's cool there. And then the second one I've done will fit in an A2. And this is how they work. Then when the recipient gets it, they open it up, and they lock them into place. So let's assemble the base, and then we'll talk about decorating after we get it assembled. Okay, so here's what you're going to need. So for the five by seven card, you're gonna need a base that is five by 10. Don't worry, measurements will be in the blog post I'm gonna link below, but I wanna go ahead and tell you now real quick too. So five by 10, you're gonna need a bridge piece. This is the piece that goes across the middle. That's three and a half by seven, and you're gonna need a brace that's four and a half by two. So three pieces to make that card. I like to show that because sometimes when we're doing these um, kind of fancy fold cards, it looks like you need a lot more pieces than you do, and I think this will help you to see it's only four pieces. All right, with this in our scoreboard on the 10 inch side, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna score it in four places. We're gonna score it at one and three fourths. I know these score marks are not super fun because they're not even numbers, but there's no eights or 16, so at least we have that going for us. So one and three fourths, then three and one fourth, just like so, and then six and three fourths, and lastly, eight and one quarter. So again, lots of numbers, but no odd numbers. So that's our stand-up base piece. While we have our scoreboard out, let's go ahead and score the rest of the pieces as well. Our bridge piece needs to be turned into our scoreboard on the three and a half inch side, and we want to score it at one and a half inch. Is inches? One and a half inches. <laughs> then, we're going to turn this into our scoreboard just like this. Now we're going to do some half scores. What I mean by that is we're going to score this down to this first score line that we did. So for these two score marks, I want you to come in an inch and three quarters, and you're going to score just till you touch that score line we made earlier. Okay, so one and three fourths to that first score line. Then on the other end, we're going to go five and one fourth to the score line. So we're not going all the way down the page. We're stopping at that horizontal score line. This is gonna give us a mark to know what to cut away because we don't need these two squares. And this kept me from making four pieces instead of three, if that makes sense. In some of the videos I'd see making the U-fold, they would cut this piece here and then cut a separate piece for here. And I just thought I really don't need to cut that much paper. I'm gonna do it this way. All right, and then lastly, this little guy. We're gonna put it in our scoreboard on the four and a half inch side. And I wanna score it at half an inch and then also at four inches. Really, all I did was score in half an inch on either side of this. So if you have trouble holding your paper still to do a half inch, this score in half an inch on one side and then turn it in your tool here and then score it again half an inch in. Either way works. So that is our five by seven measures and marks. Let's assemble it. They're super easy to assemble. We can just go ahead and do all our score marks. Let's start with this guy. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this back just like this, and that lets me see my fold line really well. And now I'm gonna do some slicing, okay? I told you I don't need this little square that we scored out of there. You can see the score line here, I don't need that. So we're gonna cut that away. And this will be the part that folds back into the U-fold to hold the card upright. And I'm cutting the score line away. A lot of times you guys ask me, am I cutting in the score line, above it, below it? I'm actually cutting the score line off so I'm just cutting to the left-hand side of it here so it won't be there anymore. It's on our waist piece. And then I'm gonna cut it away here as well. I just don't need that indention to show. It's no big deal. So that way I get a nice clean edge. So that's our piece that's gonna hold everything together. This guy, we don't have to do anything but fold this in and crease. 
on our little half inch mark, super easy. And this guy, here's what you're gonna do. This is the front of my card. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna fold this backwards like so and crease it. And then I'm gonna flip it over and fold it forward. So it's gonna go back and then forward, just like so. Then down here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna fold this piece back and then forward. So we're kind of making like, sort of like a gatefold card. See how that does? So that would be a cute card in and of itself, but that's the piece we're looking for. So it's folded like that, okay? All right, this is where, it's just easy. It's not hard to do once you see it done. All right, taking our bridge piece, this, not the bridge, this is the brace, okay? This piece, I really thought I wouldn't need. Let me show you on my finished card project. I really did not think I was gonna need this brace and I was gonna do without it and just make this like this. But once I made it, you can see the braces in here. It's right here. Once I made it, I realized this really does need a stopping point to be sturdy. So that's what we're making right now. So, got something on my paper. All right, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna line this up on the inside score line. So it's like this, see this flap? You're gonna line this up here, not over the score line, just right at the score line, okay? Then we're gonna put a little glue on it. And if I can get my lid off, there we go. Rub a little glue, and I'm just gonna scrub some glue on there. You don't need a whole lot. And then I'm gonna close this down and catch it. So that way, it's where it needs to go. It's lined up at the bottom, all that good stuff. And then it's caught where it needs to go, all right? Now I'm gonna just lay it down and let it be where it is. And I'm gonna line this side up and do the same thing. Glue inside that little score mark we made, that little half inch flap, close this guy down. And then I now have, oops, I didn't get it closed down good enough. <laughs> Close it down and let it dry for a second. And then you have your base piece. Now I wanna show you something. You see how I've got that little curve in that base? We're gonna fix that. And I learned this from, and I just looked up her channel so I could tell you, Ink Responsibility is the name of her channel. It's super cute. And she was the first place I saw the U-Card created. It's a different size, but go check her channel out. It's really cool. But she talks about retraining the paper and she's brilliant about this. So I want to show you. So I'm going to lay this down and in order to get it nice and flat, I'm just going to retrain that score so that my paper now has this nice straight bridge across it. You see how it went perfectly straight? So it's just laying the paper down and then folding out the crease, just working it out. Super brilliant. I've never thought to call it retrain until her, and I love it. Check this out. I'm going to do it on this side as well. See how it's kind of buckly? I'm going to lay that down, and then I'm just going to crease that out and get a nice, flat, straight brace. Super cool. All right. This little piece with this flap that folds down now gets glued here. And this is easy because what you're going to do is line it up on these two edges. It kind of went away just then, but you see that? You're just going to line up on these edges and glue it down. So I'm just going to add some glue here. Just on this outside flap. And then I'm going to line it up to the bottom of that square there, that rectangle piece right here. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over and show you. I'm really just gluing it down to this bottom section. And this way I can rub it into place. Then it kind of lends itself to where it goes. Now I just need to glue this piece into place so I can lift this up, get underneath here, and then glue this piece down, lining them up. Now, paper is not perfect. Paper crafting gets off. There's little bits that get off here and there. You're not going to have perfection. And you'll see here on this edge, I have a little bit hanging over. I'm not going to stress about that. I'm going to take my scissors and I like to use, I like to use these big long ones for this because I can really get to it. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to slice that away just like so. So now we're nice and even, and that was a sliver that I had to take off. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to retrain the paper again, like she talked about, which is super cute. I'm going to lay this, oh, I got to push this up. I always forget that. You got to push this piece up and then lay this down, and I've got a nice flat fold, but if you didn't, when you lay this down, just kind of work it and get your creases laying like they should. You can go in both directions if you feel you need to. See, I got a little more resistance here, so I think that was a brilliant tip. Then for standing it up, this goes in and that is the base of the card. Notice how that piece pops up. We're gonna fix that when we decorate. All right, so that's the assembly of the one that fits in the five by seven envelope. And I'll show you that real quick. Bring the five by seven back over. Here's our five by seven envelope. 
Of course, we will decorate this, but this guy fits in a standard five by seven. The only thing you need to remember when decorating is don't have your decorations coming off the sides. They need to stay contained in the base itself. So I'll show you here. See how I have a tree overlapping here? That's fine, but I wanna make sure my edges stay clear of any overlap so they'll fit in the envelope. If you're hand delivering this, Go to town and let it be anywhere you want it. Let's put together the A2 size one, and then we will decorate. All right, for A2, it's three pieces of paper. They're just different sizes. You're gonna need an eight by four and a quarter piece. The bridge is five and a half by three, and your brace is four by one and three fourths. Again, linked in the blog post below. Let's do our scoring. I'll bring my score tool back up, my scoreboard back up. And on this piece, we're gonna do it just like we did the other, with the eight inch, side in our scoreboard, we're gonna score it at one and one fourth, two and one half, five and one half, six and three quarters. This one's gonna be smaller, but it's kind of cool because you can do just a little smaller card to send to somebody. And if you have smaller embellishments, it's perfect for that. Then we're gonna take our bridge piece, okay? On the three inch side, I want you to score it at one and a quarter. So just like that. Then we're gonna turn it into our scoreboard just like we did our last bridge piece. And we're only gonna score to the first score line right there. For this score, we're gonna score at one and a quarter to that score line. Then we're gonna come on this side and score at four and a quarter to that score line. And that's gonna get us those little squares that we don't need on the corners. Then lastly, we're gonna do our brace. We're gonna put the brace in on the four inch side. And you remember how I told you that it's hard for me to get a hold of the half inch to score? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come into three and a half on this side to give myself that half inch flap. I'm gonna turn it and do the same thing. And that way I have a half inch flap on either end scored, but I didn't have to fight at that half inch side. So there you go, ready to assemble. Assembly is exactly the same as the last card, super easy. So we'll go through that again. Let's go ahead and do our bridge first. So here's our bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this down so I can see what I'm working with here. Get that piece folded and creased. Then I'm gonna cut away that little score that we did there. So I'm gonna use my scissors and I'm cutting that away. I don't need to keep the score mark, just like I did before. And then cut this one away, just like so. And then this side. It's easy once you do it. You know, once you have the measurements, it's super easy. The hardest part was getting the measurements right so that it would fit in the envelopes. And that's what I wanted to do because every time I make a card like this, and I totally understand it, the question is, will it fit in an envelope? We wanna mail them out, so that matters. All right, on our card base again, this is the front. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna turn this one backwards to start. Crease that down. I'm gonna flip it back over and turn this piece forward. So that gets one side. Same thing over here, I flipped it over, I'm gonna turn the first piece back, and then I'm gonna flip it forward and turn this piece in. Again, this is a cute little way to do a card here. You could put all kinds of embellishment and have a little open up like this, but we are going to finish making our little U-fold card. All right, with our little piece, just like we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and fold these pieces to get the, the bend started. And then we're gonna open this guy up. Now I'm gonna lay it just like I did to the inside of that score line, just like this, touching it but not overlapping it, lined up at the bottom of the card. I'm gonna add my glue to the flap. And I'm gonna close this down on top of it. And that gets one flap done. Then I'm gonna open this guy up and turn this over to the other side. So now it's lined up where it should be and lined up at the bottom. Put the glue on the inside of that little flat we did and close this guy down, same way we did. It's all the same, just smaller. Just like that, and now I can open it, and this is where we'll do that retraining. See how it's curved in the middle? So I'm gonna open it and push this down, and this one looks like it might need a good bit. Not too bad though, let's do that. So I'm just gonna recrease that where it is, and look how that automatically straightens that out. Isn't that cool? Okay, next we can add our bridge piece, just like before. Put a little glue on this, this side. Slide the flap into the middle over the brace and then line this piece up on the bottom of the side flap. And I like to just turn it over and just seal that down like that, just rub it down. And now you can see right over here, we're gonna glue this side down just the same. So I'm just gonna turn this over and hold this out of my way. 
add some glue to this little side. And then match this up. Again, if you have any hanging over the edge, you can trim that off. It's not a big deal. This one's not too bad, actually. There's a little bit. I'm going to trim that away. Just because I got scissors and I can. You don't have to. Don't feel stressed about it. No one would notice that. They're going to think this is the coolest card anyway. So there's the little sliver gone. And there we go. This is our tiny A2 U-fold. How cute is that, right? So when we do this and we close this down, we need to retrain anything. See how I've got a little buckle right there? I'm just gonna rework it. Just gonna rub that down. And then I can do it on the other side as well. And let me show you how this fits in an A2 envelope. So this is an A2 size envelope. Here's our little card. We'll get this tucked in here and this will slide in. Again, you wanna make sure your embellishments don't hang over the edge. You wanna make sure that they are tucked in nice and neat and um, all inside of the piece. Again, let's talk about this little piece in the back needs some help keeping it down, and that comes in the decorations. Let's decorate this one first. It's super cute. Let's see what we can do. All right, so this is the sticker sheet for, um, what's this one called? Hello Spring. I think it is so cute. And I want to decide what I want to use here in the middle. This is kind of cute if it would fit here. Let me get my ruler and check it. How tall are you? You are two and a quarter, and you are two and a half. So this guy would fit right there. Super cute. Or I could use the Hello Spring. It looks a little wide. Let's see how this one looks. Pick this up. I think it'll be cute right here. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to put that one right in the center. I'm going to have to hold it where I can look at it. So just like that. That looks like a little window and a bird sitting on a window, sort of, doesn't it? Now I need something to help hold this down. So I'm going to pick something here that I can sit on, like, the countertop and hold that down. This little sentiment that says good times is really cute, and I think it would sit right here really well and hold that down. The trick is you gotta put some foam tape on the back of it. That's gonna lift it up and help it to be a brace for that. So I'm gonna go over here to Scotty. I really have decided to call my foam tape Scotty. I think that is adorable, and because it's Scotch and, you know, it works. So here's Scotty, we're bringing in Scotty. And then I'm going to cut some slivers of this foam and put this on the back, just like so. And then peel off that protective piece. And then we're gonna put that into place to hold things down. So here's what I do. I want to put it in that corner, but I want this to be nice and snug. Ooh, that was close. I want this to be nice and snug down. So I'm just gonna push this into the corner, holding that into place. I think I can scoot it around a little bit, get in there, there we go, pretty good. And because it has that foam, now it will hold that down for me. So see how that's staying down so much better? So much better. Then I can decide what's going here. I really want to use this bicycle. I do not know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. This bike with the balloons on this sticker is so cute. Oh, it's gonna be perfect for right there. What I like to do is stand this up and put this down to the bottom. But since I want you to see what I'm doing, I'm gonna do it from this side and see if I can't line this up pretty good by eye. And bring it all the way over here. So there's the tire or the back tire. Let's get the front tire lined up. Look how cute that is. And the only thing sticking out is this little bit. And I'll show you how I'm gonna fix that in a second. That's adorable, right? And what's next? Let's do some more pretties. This little square says, I was made for sunny days. I think that would be adorable right here in this little corner. This is what I love about sticker packs. It makes this so easy, almost like a kit, like a card kit. There's that. And then I think I'm gonna do butterflies. There are so many little butterflies in this little um, pack. I'm gonna stick butterflies all over the place. Like they are just flying everywhere. And just for showing you today, I'm going to stop there. Look how cute that is. And that was just stickers on our base, but you could do so much more. Now, when you give this card, you're going to pop this piece up. Oh, i got to show you how I'm going to fix that um, sticker back there. What I do is I use my little embossing pillow. This is the pillow that you use when you do heat embossing. And I just come in here behind the sticker and just pat some powder on it and then just kind of push it down until the sticky goes off. And this way I don't have to do it before I glue the piece down. I can just do the part that's sticking up and this works just fine. So now it's not sticky, that's perfect. And we can now close it and open it. So I'm gonna push this piece up 
off of our brace, close this down, and it will now fit into our A2 envelope. So here's our envelope. Oh, by the way, you're gonna ask me, where do you put your sentiment? You can cut a piece or you can just write back here and that's where your sentiment goes. So here you go, into the envelope and it will be ready for mailing. And it really shouldn't cost more postage. You're putting it in a regular size envelope. It doesn't weigh anymore. We use very little foam, just one piece. So this should be uh, good to go. So that one was the A2 and these are the bigger ones. I did it exactly the same, just putting stickers where I wanted them to go. I thought they were super cute. The only thing different, this is the oval punch from Stampin' Up. Let me show you. I think I got this before it retired. I'm not sure, but it might be retired now. But this is two by one and three eighths oval and I just punched some glitter paper to make mirrors. That's all I did. The rest of this is all stickers. You can see that I popped these up so it would hold this into place. And then here I popped up that little ladybug to hold that one into place. So that's all there is to it. Let's bring this guy back over. And you can see that I use pattern paper for that one instead of the solid, but when I'm filming, solid paper is better so you guys can see what's happening on screen. Can you see that little guy? There we go. <laughs> so there you go. Five by seven, A2. I think they're super cute and I cannot wait to see what you guys do with these. When you make these, we want to see them. Head to our website, which is maymaymadeit.com. Go to the more option and click on gallery. That's where you can share your photos for everybody to see and they can be inspired by what you're doing. And if you need some inspiration, that is an incredible place for you to go check out. You can also check out our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I. There's an, some amazing inspiration there from years and years of incredible crafters loading pictures to show you how they use uh, the projects that I do. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have an incredible weekend and I'll see you again on Tuesday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.